So let's go and look at what we are expected to do. So we've already shown a list of items. We're using our list style. We've created to do class. Now let's do the item complete action, which is going to be a bit more fun. So since we have already our boolean here that tells us if our to do is complete or not, we're going to use that. So instead of doing this, we're going to create a method here, or we'll call this method here, which is will be set completeness. And this method doesn't exist yet, but we're going to declare it down here. We're going to pass it our item. And to do that, we're going to just copy it here. And what we're going to do is say that the property complete of our to do is going to now be the opposite of what it currently is. Now, so that we can actually see this uh, change happening, we're going to use, instead of an icon directly here, we're going to make use of another widget, which is a checkbox widget. And we're passing it our complete value, and this means that we're going to have a nice animation uh, that is provided to us by the checkbox instead of just swapping icons. Now, if we try it now, something weird's going on here. If I save, oh, the animations actually play, then we have our states changed. But what's happening here? Well, what's happening is that we're changing the uh, variable, but we're not telling the view to re-render. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we have a function called set state, and what it does is in situations that it doesn't know that it needs to re-render, we're going to tell it exactly to do that. And so we're going to use set state to tell our app that it needs to refresh our view. We have a list now that actually is clickable. Our items can be marked as complete. Now let's move to the next step. Our next step was to be able to remove an item. And again, we're going to make use of uh, another widget, which is really useful, which comes with its own animation and very easy to use. But before that, we're going to clean up our code a little bit. We have a lot of uh, indentations going on here. And so we can clean it up. I'm going to copy, cut all of this. I'm going to declare here a new widget. I'm going to widget function. I'm going to say it's called build body. And it's going to return what we had before, like this. And we need to now tell it to render up here. This Whoops. And it still, everything still works, but I'm going to do this again so we can make our code a bit more readable once more. Build item and paste this, but now we need to pass a list index, so we need to pass our item up here. So we're going to return a build item, but we're going to say we expect to get, we expect to receive a to-do item here. And now we just change our variables to the correct name. And let's check everything's still working. Everything's still working just fine. All right, now what do we need to do? We want to be able to use a dismissible. And to do that, I'm going to wrap our whole wrist style with a new widget. I'm using a helper from Android Studio that allows us to wrap a current widget with a new widget, which is quite helpful so I don't have to be opening closing parentheses and whatnot. So now I'm going to look up our dismissible widget. And you'll notice that it's giving us a warning that it's missing a key. Now this happens because a dismissible widget has its own animations it needs to know that it doesn't need to re-render it again once it's been dismissed. So we need to give it a unique key. The keys here are strings. So to do, to give it a unique key, what we're going to do is access our item. In Dart, all objects have a unique hash code. And that allows us to have a string that makes this a unique key, which we can reuse. And now it doesn't become a problem anymore. So now we actually have our dismissible, and this means we can now dismiss items. But this is going to be a problem, because once I do this, if I do a hot reload, as if uh, we were re-rendering our view, 
we can see that it's still part of the tree dismissible widget and because this happens because we've dismissed but we're not actually giving it any call back when, once it's dismissed and that's exactly what we're going to do now so we're going to say we're going to undismissed and we're going to give it a function callback and it expects to be able to give us a direction which we won't need to use but it needs to be here so what we're going to do is we're going to create a method called remove item and we're going to pass it our item so we're going to come down here and do exactly that Let's declare our and we're going to go into our list remove item again because every object's unique we don't need to go looking for ids or searching for it inside our list we're just going to tell our list to remove that item and that's what it will do so let's do a hot restart here so we reset everything and now if we delete it and if we, if we do a hot reload there are no errors we can still use everything that item is gone now this isn't the prettiest thing because when we do this we don't really know what's going to happen we have no visual uh, feedback to the user so we need to improve this a little bit we are going to add here a background so giving it background, we're giving it a container. Container is sort of like a, a div in HTML. It's a, a container will exactly as the word, as the name calls, will contain other widgets inside. And in this case, what we want to do is give it a background color. And again, we're using a constant here, which gives, in this case, a red color. And I personally prefer a darker shade and as the 600 shade is the material design shade which is quite useful any shade you use here is the same you'll see uh, in the guidelines for material design this means that we now have a background here and this is already a good sign that we're going to remove something but it's not enough so what we're going to check here is we can actually go and see oh direction we can access now another constant and we can give it a few options but the one we want is going to be start to end this means that when you try to dismiss the item you can do it from the start to the end but you can't do it any other way around this is quite useful already I still like to see something a little bit better to tell the user we're gonna delete the item so child so the child of this container is gonna be an icon and in this case it's gonna be a delete icon find it there we go delete icon and it will be visible here but it's in the center it's black uh, it's not doesn't look very good against the red so what we're gonna do is give it a different color so it's more visible colors white and we're also going to align it to the left because this is where our, uh, our swipe starts from so we need to be able to see immediately what's going to happen and our alignment here is going to be also a constant and we're going to do center left there we go but it's a mm, few pixels off and it doesn't look very good so we're using the padding option here and uh, edge and sets it what is what flutter uses to define all the paddings all the margins and everything else we might need to do spacing between widgets and other elements in our view in this case we want to use only a left padding and we're giving it 12 points here see how it looks all right that looks much better now that means now when i do this it's fine i know what's going to happen and it looks just great